Hi, so today I want to talk about the Fermi Paradox. The question, why don't we see any life? Because, you know, actually we do look around, you know, our telescopes are quite good. We look around and we see no sign of any advanced intelligent life. Uh, why is that? We look at hundreds and thousands of galaxies, empty, hundreds and thousands of stars, empty, don't seem to have, well, what we're looking for basically would be some obvious sign of life from maybe a different atmosphere that creates some element that only life would be able to create. Or we are looking for actually like Dyson spheres, like massive structures built around stars to gather and harvest energy or any other mega structures, just some weird stuff going on in the world. Uh, we're looking for that, that advanced civilization we would imagine we would create such a thing. So in the same way as if aliens would land on planet Earth, they would look around and they would see us doing weird terraforming, mining and gathering materials and, you know, delving deep into Earth and building skyscrapers, you know, tearing the planet apart and manufacturing, turning the raw materials of this planet for goods and products and stuff and all of this around us. You know, that's what we do. And I think that's kind of magical. And for me, an interesting way of thinking, we just take this stuff from the ground and we are so advanced that we can build all this stuff. You know, um, that to me is obvious. So aliens would land, they would see that, but we look around, we don't see none of that. One thing that I think people forget, and, and one solution that I would propose just right away, would be that, you know, it's basically, we have like just woken up. You know, not even a thousand years have we been observing the universe. You know, so we just wake up, open our eyes, and we don't see anything immediately, and we think, okay, there's no life in the universe. I think it's a bit too quick uh, to make that judgment. But, but it is a real question. We would see something. So, you know, my own opinion has also evolved on this a lot. But anyway, let's, let's get to it. So uh, one of the things that people would say, that space big. That space is big and genuinely space is big, you know, thousands of light years and millions of light years, it's no joke, it's no joke. Uh, traveling those distances, you have either really good motivation or, you know, of course it's difficult for us to charge because if we would advance into some, you know, type two, type three civilization and have, you know, enough energy and raw materials, you know, it might be so easy to just build some drones or whatever uh, to fly around in the universe. It would cost so little cost so little so you know maybe maybe uh, that's one thing but maybe there is some ethics or morals that prevent aliens from visiting or maybe there is simply no point maybe that is one solution i also would propose is that once the civilization advances far enough uh, instead of you know colonizing and being obsessed with the outside world they go inside because we will have that opportunity in not such a long time of creating uh, ultra immersive, you know, perfectly realistic simulations. And you could program and have inside that simulation whatever you want, literally perfect life. You would never get bored of it. That's a stupid argument. People would say, I would get bored in a perfect simulation. No, you wouldn't. If it really was a perfect simulation, then it was simulated to provide you with exact the challenges and heartache and whatever you need to make your life interesting and satisfying like by definition you would never get bored of a perfect world if it really was perfect for you and I mean it when I say that we would have super advanced artificial intelligence that could scan your brain know you more deeply than you know yourself and build a kind of map and list of characteristics of exactly what you need to make you the most fulfilled existence possible of course that's one option of you know um, What's the word for it? Uh, appreciating too much our basic primitive human needs. The other option would be transcending into way expanded consciousness and intelligence and experience things way beyond, you know, just satisfying your basic urges or whatever, which might be fun for a couple of millennia or however long you want. But eventually, you know, if you would get even a taste of the deeper meaning and existence, uh, you would want that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like some people, you know, say like, ah, oh, you know, see a cute kitten or a cat somewhere and just, oh, that cat has such an easy life. I would want to be that cat, you know, not having to worry about anything like, sure, you know, yeah. But uh, but the life and existence and experience of a cat is quite uh, limited if you think a bit longer about it. Might be fun though. Anyway, so, okay, space is big. What would be, okay, all, I disagree with this one, but being fair, we'll write this. 
Alright, that's my last. See if he leaves. Sorry, Sean. Kill them, hoops. Okay, sorry about the bad writing, but you know, this is the argument that once a species advances far enough that they will then kill, kill themselves. Um, I don't think that is very likely because with the answers to these Fermi paradox questions, basically whatever answers you provide, they must apply in all cases, like in 99% of the cases. And I really doubt that 99% of intelligent species would kill themselves. Of course, haha, if they kill themselves, they're not really intelligent, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Even with us human beings, you know, one thing is I try to be as optimistic as I can. I have faith in humanity and I don't think that we will kill ourselves. You know, I have belief that, you know, there is enough communication and worry to, to prevent such nonsense. Um, and I'm sure at the moment everything possible is also being done to prevent, uh, you know, things from escalating. Um, so, so I doubt that argument. I can see it. You know, it, it's possible that we create some technology that will wipe us out, some kind of nano replicators that will, you know, just take great coup scenario that you imagine some, uh, create some nanotechnology and it's some self replicating robotics that just, uh, you know, use all the atoms in their environment to reproduce and eventually eating the entire planet and everything on it and in it, and uh, nothing will be left of Earth then. Uh, or some incredibly damaging, you know, virus or other technology that we can currently even imagine. Okay, so one is that space is big. Another option would be, of course, that we are actually. So, this option that we are actually in fact alone, that we are the first ones and uh, we are just here. I don't think this is likely either. I think it's possible for all of these options. I think they're possible. And if we're being open-minded, I would always say that, you know, just have an open mind. All of these are possible. We simply do not have enough information and intelligence to be certain uh, of these things enough to make some sort of judgment on it for, for sure. Um, I think it's possible that we're the first ones. I don't think so, because going back to what I said in the very beginning, I think it is similar to the thing that we only just woke up, opened our eyes. We don't even understand our consciousness. You know, there's so many, you know, the deeper laws of physics we don't understand. We understand massive parts of physics, you know. It's always kind of drives me a bit mad when, you know, people who aren't really into science or whatever say that, you know, oh, we know so little. No, we don't. We know a lot. Uh, you know, if you if you look at physics books and, and how far we come and what we actually understand, it's crazy. Um, but but it is true that we there are still many things that we do not understand. And for me, the most fascinating part, you know, we might live in a multiverse. So you know, you know, good for you. You know, you learned like zero point infinite zero point one percent of you know what the laws of physics would be possible in the multiverse. Like the laws of physics in our universe could be completely arbitrary. We're just one multiverse with a set of laws of physics that is you know able to make produce intelligent life, and the rest of the universe is totally different, chaotic. So maybe string theory is a solution. I don't know enough, but you know maybe string theory is true because it describes the possible laws of physics in the multiverse. Anyway, so another option would be the zoo hypothesis. So another option would be the zoo hypothesis, which essentially says that all intelligent civilizations, at least the ones that are close to us, intentionally make it so that it's not possible for us to observe them. So, you know, they're hiding from us uh, until some magical moment when, you know, we're smart enough or something. I, I, I find some truth in the zoo hypothesis. It can be framed as all things in many different ways, uh, but mostly when people talk about the zoo hypothesis, they imagine that there's some galactic uh, federation and you know they're just waiting to welcome us once we're smart enough. If that was the case, then I say, you know, screw you to those aliens you know, who just waiting for us if we make it or not, like if they know about determinism and free will, like it's out of our hands, we either make it or don't. If they want to invite us to their federation, come help us. You know, what are you waiting for? That's stupid. I would be so annoyed if that were true. 
Unless, of course, it's some super intelligent artificial intelligence and just randomly playing a game, or some sadistic aliens that just watch us for fun. You know, possibilities are endless, really. Uh, but that particular idea that they're waiting for us to be advanced enough, total nonsense to me. I think it's ridiculous and you know, like either come help us, like it would be so easy, just give us the intelligent technology, wisdom, you know, spread the planet with some nanorobotics that go into the bloodstream of every human being and make us wiser and smarter and give us some interface which customized exactly for us and show us on a big screen, imagined in our head, explaining to us exactly what's going on and give us enough drugs, whatever neurotransmitters we need to, you know, receive the message in a positive and understanding way and then the whole humanity is lifted up into, uh, you know, the actual Galactic Federation, but this kind of nonsense just waiting for us, you know, to do it or not, I think it's dumb. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> another option would be hibernation. I'm sorry, like, like for 20 minutes on this video, always like I'm not trying any interesting, just you know, I just like to have it. I don't know, it's it's kind of useless. I could just put those up on the screen but I don't know I like it in the future I will do something more useful with this but I don't know anyway um, so hibernation uh, hibernation essentially you know it makes some sense and I, and I think it would make sense for like some super advanced artificial intelligence who only thinks about optimization and maximization of energy and you know possible value gotten from the universe so hibernation why is because the colder the universe gets, the more you can do with matter and energy. The colder the universe gets, the cheaper and more efficient and easier calculations are. That means simulations, that means solving all kinds of equations, anything, simulating anything becomes easier and uh, near the end of the end of the universe where all the stars, you know, so some super advanced civilizations or aliens might be I mean, eventually, if you get super advanced far enough, it doesn't even make any difference. If it used to be biological and now is super intelligence, let's just call it super intelligence, what it is. Um, so basically, they would hoard matter and energy as they can. And as the universe cools down and the last star stars begin to die down, they will start running the simulations and stuff. And you could get tremendous increases in optimization and like value if you want to do that. Uh, I don't think they're like shutting themselves out. That would make no sense. Or maybe, you know, it would be like going to sleep literally and waking up and it makes no difference if like 10 trillion years have passed and now you can run your simulation at full capacity. You know, crazy to think about. So these are some of the options. There are way more, way more options. Uh, it is crazy we don't see them. I will still, I still think in this way that, that I did in the beginning that, you know, we just woke up and opened our eyes and I think it's way too early to make any judgments. However, I would also add, of course, that it is really strange that we don't see any mega structures or crazy stuff or even just, you know, some small drones on our planet or solar system. Like it would be so easy to create for our truly advanced civilization. You know, and space is big also, you know, uh, there might be only like 10 civilizations in a galaxy or one advanced civilization in a galaxy. So, you know, space is big. So these are some of my thoughts on the solutions to the Fermi parallax. Uh, I hope there was something interesting here for you. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.